So just talking about the top line findings from the Notion trial. So this is a trial that has been previously presented, but today we heard more about the five-year outcomes. And this is a trial of several hundred people, so I think it was about 300 patients who were randomized in the study. And this is a trial of all comers for TAVR, percutaneous aortic valve placement, versus surgical AVR. So the, the trial was novel in the sense that this was a patient population that was not just restricted to high-risk surgical patients, not just intermediate risk, but really all comers as, um, as being considered for either surgical or percutaneous aortic valve replacement. So the strengths of the study are you know, that this has not really been previously approached in an all comers fashion. So that's one thing that is a tremendous contribution to the field. The top line findings um, was that overall, um, uh, surgical AVR and percutaneous AVR, TAVR, they were non inferior to each other. So there had been concerns about the possibility of higher risk of, of MACE, of major adverse cardiovascular events in lower risk patients undergoing TAVR, but that was not the case um, for this particular study, um, albeit it was a relatively small sample, sample size, so the, the confidence intervals remain relatively wide. Of course, there are considerations that need to be taken into account when thinking about TAVR for lower risk patients. There was a very high rate of um, pacemaker implantation in patients who underwent TAVR. This is one of the self-expanding valves. We've known in the past from other studies that there are higher rates of pacer implantation for these types of valves. Um, and that was again seen in this particular study. So about 40% of patients ended up requiring permanent pacing. In addition to that, we've also seen that there's relatively high rates of perivalvular leak. So aortic regurgitation was seen after device implantation um, in a substantial proportion of patients. Um, and it seemed like there was more symptomatology in terms of heart failure symptoms at the one year mark, but that appeared to largely dissipate over time. One other finding that did catch my attention that hasn't really been previously discussed was that there was a, a quite a higher rate of um, endocarditis seen for patients who underwent TAVR as compared to surgical AVR. Some of these observations have been noted in the past. Because this study was relatively small in sample size, the p-value is not statistically significant, but nonetheless there was nearly about a two-fold higher rate of endocarditis for patients who underwent TAVR. So as the main takeaway, I think that this trial provides important reassurance that you know, we might be able to start shifting more and more towards offering TAVR as an option for our lower risk patients, but we are going to still need some larger studies to, to confirm that um, as we think about you know, at what threshold do we really draw the, draw the line.